Hey everyone, Michael from Xano here. In this tutorial, I'm going to cover webhooks, what they are, and how to set them up in Xano so we can connect them to third-party services. So first of all, what exactly is a webhook? Well, a webhook is something that happens or an action that happens after something else is performed. And that sounds kind of vague, but let's go ahead and start to jump into this example and maybe it'll make a little more sense. So today to uh, explain webhooks, we're going to use a, another service called Typeform. And I just signed up for a free account and am using one of their templates. And let me go ahead and just uh, quickly preview this so you can see it's basically just a contact form. And you can say we get in touch, we fill out, it looks like they ask for a first name and then a last name, an email address, and then lastly, what type of service I would be interested in uh, for this fake company, right? So I might just say financial services, hit submit. Okay, but what happens with all that data? Where does it go? So I'm sure Typeform might have a place to collect it, but what if we want to incorporate this in our application, maybe store this information in our database so we can actually use it? So that is where webhooks come in handy. So you'll notice at the top here, there is a connect option. And when that loads, we can see there's integrations that they have already built in, but they have this option for webhooks. So we can simply add a webhook and you'll notice it'll ask for a URL. So we can actually create a webhook in Xano to receive this data. So let me jump back to Xano here and I'm going to jump to the API and into this demo group where there's no API endpoints. And I'm going to just start an endpoint from scratch and I'll call this uh, form submission. And then we're going to make this a post and that's important for webhooks uh, to use this post method. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. So we have a blank API endpoint here. What I can go ahead and do in my function stack, I'm going to go to utility functions and there is a function here called get all input and in parentheses webhook. So this will get the entire payload that gets sent to us. And you can see there's some different encoding options. Most of the times it's going to be JSON for today. Uh, we're going to use JSON. That's why it's defaulted as that. I'm just going to call this return variable payload here. And then I actually don't need a response right now. And I'll show you why in a second. So we're just going to get all inputs right now. And this is pretty cool. So I'm going to grab the endpoint URL and let's go back and actually uh, connect it here and hit save webhook. Okay, and then let's go ahead and make sure this webhook is on in type form. And now we are uh, connected. So if I actually go to the share link and submit a live form, and we go tell me more, and let me enter in that similar information again. So I'll type in my first and last name, an email address, and then a service that I'm interested, and I hit submit. Okay, so it says all good. But what just happened because we made that connection with the webhook, that data has been sent to that URL. So let's jump back to Xano and take a look. So in Xano, if we go to the top right here and go to request history, well, we can see all the requests that were sent to this webhook that we set up. And right here is that form I just submitted. So what's really cool is we can go into this and I can actually open the inputs and see everything that was sent to me from Typeform. It looks like we have an event ID, form response, there's even a token, and then we have our answers. So we know in sequential order, we had our first name, last name, email, and then our different choices for what kind of service we're interested in. And I can even keep expanding this. We can see choice uh, object has the consulting services. So there's a whole lot of information in here. Uh, for the point of this tutorial, we just want to gather uh, the ans answers and store it in our database. So that's it. our first name, last name, email, and the choice that they are interested in. So I'm going to go to the database and let's set up a uh, submissions table. And I don't need the endpoints right now, so I'll just go submissions. So the first field is just our first name. And then of course we have our last name. And then I'll go ahead and add an email field for email. And then lastly, we could go ahead and 
do maybe an enum field for those services if it's going to be predefined. But I'm just going to go do a text field for uh, just speeding up this video a little bit. So we'll just say services there. So those are all the questions uh, and answers from my form submission. So let's jump back to uh, that webhook we set up. And one thing I want to mention again about this get all input function is it allows us to store that entire payload uh, in a variable in Xano so that we can transform that data, manipulate it, maybe send it to another service or store it in a Xano database. We can do really whatever we want with it at the power of the function stack. So since we know the data is somewhere nested in this uh, payload variable, we need to actually find the correct path to get it out when we go to add it to our database. So if I go back to request history, and I'm just going to click on this bottom one. The second one was uh, a quick test that I ran. But if we go ahead and look at inputs here, well, you can see that there's this copy button. So this will actually copy that entire input payload. And why that's important is because we can use that with a feature called subpath in Xano to actually get the correct path in this variable to grab the data we want. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go to database request now and do add record. And we'll go ahead and do that for uh, submissions here, that table we just created. So if I go ahead on this first line and say first name and just hover over my payload variable and select this subpath, I can now paste in all those inputs and hit define. And this allows me just to visually traverse through all that data to get to exactly where I want. And you can see there's my first name, Michael. So if I just click on the, that text right there, you can see that Xana will automatically create the dot notation to basically grab that data at this exact path. So I can keep doing that now for each part of my response. So I go back into form response, answers, and then we can see that once I go ahead and select last name, there's a very similar pass it up. So you see the zero in one here. That's because in the path of this variable, there is something called an array or a list known as answers. So zero and one are what's called indexes, which is how we know a certain place in that list or array and indexes happen to start at zero. So that's why you're seeing zero for first name. So let's go ahead and keep doing this. And I'm going to once again, use this subpath feature because since we have a different data type here, I think this email path will look a little bit different and you can see, yes, it does. So we have instead of dot text, we have dot email after our index. And let's also do services because this was a multiple choice. We'll just go ahead and hit the drop down and answers. And then you can see choice is nested all the way here in, uh, or I'm sorry, services is nested all the way in this choice object here called label. So if I go ahead and select that, once again, it will create that dot notation. One other thing I want to talk about real quick is Sometimes when working with uh, payloads from external services through webhooks or even external APIs, sometimes the response that they send us has a piece of data that we want to use, but sometimes it's not actually in the payload for whatever reason. For example, maybe Typeform doesn't require me to put in my first name and the first name isn't even a part of the payload, right? So what we can actually do, because dot notation assumes that a value is actually there, we can use this thing right here called get filter. So how that would look is I'm actually going to uh, delete this here and just select this payload variable. So we would start with the variable and then I could use this get filter here and now type in um, the path, I believe it's form response dot answers dot zero dot text. So that in case it's not in our response, we can define this default value here. Oftentimes this might be null or zero depending on what type of data you're using, but it could really be anything. I could make this default name say uh, Mr. or Joe or something. So I can go ahead and update that and I'm just going to double check. I have form response.answers.zero. So that is the right path, but you can see how that now looks versus our dot notation. So this would just make it more flexible in case it doesn't find this exact path in my response because maybe it's not sent for whatever reason. So let me go ahead and save. And now we're ready to actually go ahead and uh, run a new form submission and just get it automatically added to our database. So if I just jump back to Typeform and let me get this 
copy link again and I'll paste it back in my browser to rerun this anew. And now let's go ahead and type in uh, someone new. So we'll just go ahead and say, we'll say Aaron Smith. And I think I can just press enter here and we'll just say Aaron at test.com. And then lastly, Aaron will be interested in IT management. So I went ahead and hit submit. So now our webhook should have been sent. So we can come back to Xano. One thing we could do is we could check our request history, which I know it should be in there, but let's jump to our database right away to see if that data got added correctly. So if we go ahead now and look, there's Aaron Smith, his email, and the service that he's interested in. So just in review, we were able to set up a webhook. We used this post method. We started with this get all inputs because that allows us just to grab all the input um, into a variable in Xano. We were able to use dot notation or the get filter um, and also subpath to get the exact piece of data in that entire payload uh, that we wanted. And remember the get filter is flexible in case sometimes those answers may or may not be there. And now we can really do whatever with the data. Of course, here we went ahead and added it into our database record. Maybe you want to push it into another service. Um, really, the sky's the limit. So I hope this video was insightful and helpful. Remember, you can use the request history right here in Xano to see what's being sent uh, to this endpoint. Uh, typically, we don't need responses in webhooks uh, because we're probably not going to uh, be pushing this uh, to a front end, but maybe sometimes you are. So just keep that in mind. In this case, we didn't need one. I hope the video was helpful. Uh, if it was, please go ahead, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like this video so other people can find it, and we'll see you guys in the next tutorial.